what's up guys back with another video and today got something a little bit different for you so i've got a 2021 bronco sport here and we're going to be doing a review for you um so before we get started remember to like comment subscribe and smash that notification bell and we'll get right into it so before we get started i am testing out a mic today so so if the sound quality sounds better um or if you like the sound a little bit better then definitely let me know down in the comments below it should be a lot better at cutting out the wind noise i know that's a issue i've had in the past is you know a lot of wind noise coming in especially come winter here and Oklahoma, it gets pretty windy. So if you think the sound quality is better or if you like how it sounds, um, be sure to let me know in the comment below and I'll continue to keep using it. So as you can see, finally got my new glasses. Took like maybe a week and a half to come in. So really happy with them. They're super comfy. I like how they look and I've been waiting to get some glasses for a while. So I finally picked those up. But today we've got this 2021 Bronco Sport here. This is my rental. So the car doesn't go into the shop until January 4th. So um, it's still sitting in the garage and since the quarter panel is smashing into the wheel it's basically undrivable so that's why i got the rental already but yeah here next week on january 4th we should be dropping off the car at the shop finally to you know get her all fixed up anyway let's get on with the video i've had this for about a week now and it's pretty comfy it's pretty nice it has like a 1.3 liter turbo engine so nothing super crazy it does have a little bit of pep to it but it's not gonna set any records or anything i believe it is all-wheel drive so that's always nice to have. We haven't really had a winter this year. It's been pretty mild. So I haven't really needed all wheel drive, but it's good to have it anyway. My first opinions of this car, my first thoughts are they're super nice looking. It's like a super sleek, super modern looking car. And they got the LED headlights, LED fog lights. Fog lights come on when you turn. The brights auto come on when you're in a dark area. It's quite nice. As far as gas mileage with the three cylinder turbo engine, seems like it does get pretty good gas mileage. Um, it seems it has a super small tank. I think it only holds like maybe 13 gallons max. So it's very small tank. And um, I don't know if this is an issue with every Bronco Sport, but when you fill it up, the meter on the um, on the gas doesn't go all the way. So it's, I don't know, it stops maybe seven eighths of the way through. And it's kind of weird to me. I've tried to, you know, make sure that it's completely full and it's definitely full. So I don't know what, what that is, whether that's just how they all are, or um, if this one's just effective. But yeah, I thought that was pretty weird. So as far as an everyday driver, if you're looking for just like a little, like a town car or just a little car for your family or maybe just a daily commuter, it's definitely pretty nice. It's got a super nice infotainment system. So it's got the Apple CarPlay and it's got the uh, Ford Sync, I believe. And it's, it's pretty solid. It's got some nice speakers on it. It's definitely a nice little daily driver. Um, good gas mileage. This is the Big Bend package, as you can see right there on the door. So that's like, that's essentially base. So there's one below this, which is the base package. And then there's the Big Bend. So um, doesn't have anything super crazy, nothing super fancy, but I guess the CarPlay comes with, comes factory with all of their new cars, which it's pretty nice. Definitely wish I had that in the Audi. Yeah, we'll go ahead and hop inside here. Got all your little dials over here, the windows, right and left mirror, and then you got child lock, of course. Hop inside here, turn the battery on. So you've got a nice little animation when the car comes on. Uh, comes factory in the Bronco. Looks pretty cool. And you got this nice little infotainment system. If I plug my phone in, I could show you the, the car playing everything, but that'll, you know, mess up the mic and it'll probably try to play music and do all that stuff. So not gonna do that, but it does have like 911 assist. So if you're ever in an emergency, you can turn that on to automatically call 911. They have some apps that you can download. I'm not really sure what those are. It's just a rental, so I'm not really gonna download those or mess with them too much. All your settings, you can control like your phone, Bluetooth, you can change the time. Got all your phone stuff here we're gonna keep the audio off so that way it doesn't keep cutting us out. I don't have the car on, so that's what you're getting all those lights for. But this is what I was talking about when you fill it all the way up. I don't know, it just doesn't go all the way to full, which might be a pet peeve for some people. I don't know if that's the way it is for all the new Broncos, but that definitely uh, bothers me a little bit. But um, down here, you got all your little light controls. So it does have fog lights, like I said. You can turn on just your uh, daytime running lights, turn the lights completely off, turn it on auto, or you can just um, leave them on all the time, which, I'm gonna leave that on auto. Then you got a nice little trunk button there. It does have the little turning gear knob. I don't really know what to call that, but I'm, I've never been really a fan of those. I always reach for the gear shifter because I'm used to driving a manual and whatnot, but um, it's actually pretty nice. It's really simple, you just get in and turn it. So it's kind of like muscle memory. You can get in and get going really fast, but I'm not, I don't know how I feel about those. I'm not too sure on it yet, but it does have that if that's something that you're interested in. Got all your air and AC controls and whatnot. Um, and then all your music stuff up here, your hazards and all that fun stuff. The floor is a little bit dirty because I have been daily driving it, so don't mind that. But the seats are pretty nice. They are cloth, but they got a nice little print on them. I don't mind them. I think they look pretty nice. I'm sure if you got like a bigger package, like a more luxurious package, probably nicer seat options, but I don't mind them. Here's the back seat. It's not super big, but it's definitely, if you got like small kids or if you're gonna have a couple friends in here every once in a while, then shouldn't be too bad. But yeah, it's not the biggest of all cars, but it's definitely 
definitely enough to get you going, especially if you're gonna be the only one driving it most of the time. And then here is the rear trunk space. It is pretty spacious back here, so you can fit quite a, quite a bit of stuff back here. And if you needed to, you can fold the seats down as well. And they do have this nice little um, like texture. It's almost like bed liner, it feels like, but um, just so you're not messing up the back of your seats or messing up carpet like a lot of cars put in the back. But there definitely is quite a bit of room back here. They got a nice 12 volt adapter over here on the side. They got some, looks like some kind of hook you can hook some stuff into, um, probably like a cargo net or something. And then looks like a light right here. Oh, wow. So, so you click that button and you get a nice little, uh, get some little overhead lights going on there. Maybe in case you're back here working on something or trying to fill up an ice chest, um, that could definitely be helpful if it's dark outside. Then we got some more hooks over here and then some more little hooks down there if you were gonna mount some stuff down. If you're like the, the sportsy outdoors kind of person, you wanna go camping and stuff, I think this would be a pretty good car for you, all wheel drive. I don't know how good it is off, off road. I hadn't taken it off road, I don't know if I will, but yeah, I think, if you're a camping kind of person, I think you got plenty of room back here to you know fit all your equipment and have a good time. Then come over on the passenger side, same thing, we've already seen it. Then you got some little storage nets over here beside the seats. It does have hill assist and a parking brake, of course. All right, so hopping back inside the car, um, I'll show you the GOAT modes. So I don't really know exactly what it means. I assume it means like go over any terrain or go on all terrain or something like that. I don't really know but essentially it means that they have modes for everything. So I've tested out the sport mode. I just wanted to see if she had a little pep. I did notice there was a little bit more tur turbo noise, if any of you care about that. Um, if you're my normal fan base, the uh, you know the Audi guys, I'm, I'm sure you care about the turbo noise. But as far as anybody that may be looking to buy this car, I don't know if you really care about that, but it does give you a little bit more turbo noise and it does get a little bit more peppy. I think it kind of tweaks the transmission a little bit, makes it shift a little bit later. It gives it a little bit more of a sporty feel. It's not fast or anything by any means, but uh, it does get a little bit quicker. So it starts a normal. We were just in sport, which I was just talking about. And they've got like a slippery mode, which I would assume if, is if it's like icy or snowing outside or anything like that. Got an eco mode. Not really sure if that does too much. Uh, I'd have to look more into that, but I tried it a little bit to see if it was saving any gas. I don't really know. I don't know if I noticed a difference or anything. So I just kind of leave it at normal when I'm driving it. And then you've got a, a sand mode here if you were, I don't know, maybe driving at like a, at a beach or somewhere where it's super sandy, they do have that, so. Oh, I guess when you put it in sand mode, it also turns traction control off. I didn't notice that before. Put it back in normal. Yep, and then traction control goes back on. That's pretty cool. All right, guys. So as I was saying, this is the 2022 Ford Bronco Sport. So it has the 1.5 liter three-cylinder turbo engine or three-cylinder EcoBoost engine, all-wheel drive. Um, it does have auto stop start, so I'm not too sure how other people feel about it, but I don't really want auto stop start most of the time. But after driving this car for a little bit, you don't really mind it. You kind of get used to it. It supposedly saves gas, but I don't really know how much gas you're saving starting the car up continuously or multiple times. I feel like it kind of injects more fuel into the engine when it starts up. So I don't, don't really know how effective that is, but it does have it. It does have hill assist. That way you don't roll back on hills or anything. It does have blind spot detection, which is pretty nice. The blind spots in it aren't super crazy, but sometimes people can get in, you know, those awkward spots where you can't really see. So it does have blind spot detection, which is super helpful. Keyless entry. So to lock the car without having the keys in your hand, you can just simply touch on the um, little sensor right there. It's got it kind of, it's got it lined so that way you can tell where to touch and to unlock it. You can simply just put your hand in there and um, I'm not sure if you could hear that or not with the mic, but the car ended up unlocking. They've got like this little keypad thing. So if you wanted to set like a passcode, that way if you forget your keys or anything like that, I guess you could just get right in there. Or maybe if you just can't find your keys out there in like a bag or something like that, just put your passcode in and get right into the car. This car does have quite a bit of features. It's crazy how many features cars come with stock nowadays. I guess we are in the future, so <laughs> that's pretty cool. I was doing some research and it has like the mole assembly or the mole straps. So I don't really know what that means, but on the back of the um, driver's seat and passenger seat, you have like, you got a nice little zipper here for some storage. And then um, I guess somewhere back here, there's a mole strap. I don't really know what that means, but I guess it's for like any of your trail hunting equipment, like flashlights, water bottle, anything like that. It does have that. Here in the back, we've got, looks like a USB and a USB-C. So that is one feature that I thought was super cool. So um, it does have USB-C and USB. So if you have like a fast charger for your iPhone, you can plug that in. Any of the MagSafe chargers, you can plug that in. Um, even like your MacBook charger or, you know, anything that takes a USB-C, you can plug it in directly to the car. So that's pretty cool. You don't have to have like a special adapter or anything. It does have another 12 volt adapter up front. But yeah, I think it's pretty nice. I was looking at um, some of the specs online. These are 17 inch wheels and they're aluminum, just painted gray. So they're not alloy, which I'm pretty sure 
those are very similar anyway. Like I was saying, this is a big bend package, which starts around $28,000. And I know the base model starts at like $27,000. So super affordable for like a brand new car. And um, it's, it's pretty nice for a daily driver. So I would highly recommend if you're in the market for, you know, a pretty affordable, nice little compact SUV, especially if you're like an outdoorsy kind of person, um, you get some good gas mileage and um, it's got a lot of features to accommodate your, your hobbies and your extra activities. So got roof straps so you can strap anything you need to the top. Uh, it's got the floodlights in the back like I was showing you. It's got the rubberized floor mats in the back uh, and then on the back seats as well. So it's definitely made for someone who's uh, gonna take it outdoors and you know go on some adventures with this. I think it looks really good. Um, I love the gray paint that they have on here along with the uh, the gray wheels. So I'm gonna take on a short little drive real quick just to give you a little feel of the car. We'll go ahead and hop inside the car and go for a drive. And it does have a reverse camera if I didn't already say that. Pretty nice one, it's got a pretty big screen to display to. It does have really good brakes, <laughs> as you would expect from a new car. I will say when you first get inside of it, it is kind of awkward. It has like these two little humps on the uh, on the hood, which don't really affect your vision at all, but it's just kind of weird seeing that because it reflects a lot of light and I don't know, it can kind of throw you off. One thing I will say is your foot kind of does slip off of the gas pedal a little bit. I don't know what it is, it's either just a really narrow gas pedal or um, it's short, one of the two, but I noticed my foot does slip off the gas pedal a couple times, but you get used to it and then you kind of adjust and you're fine after that. Put it in sport mode real quick. <laughs> it's not the fastest thing on the planet, but it does get a little bit peppier. We'll go ahead and switch it back into normal. And that was basically just the uh, switching the goat mode settings like I showed you earlier. But it is, it's super smooth. Uh, it's got a nice drive, so it'd be nice for a daily driver or uh, just a little grocery getter. If you're buying this car, you're probably gonna use it as a daily, so it's pretty nice, super smooth. Like I was saying earlier, I would definitely still, even though this is nice, it's got good gas mileage, it's more, you know, I'd say more of an economy car, more affordable. Um, I definitely have to get the, the Ford, either the four door or the two door. In my personal opinion, Probably the two door, just cause, you know, like the OG Ford Bronco, I think that's pretty cool. But yeah, this is definitely a nice little car if you're just looking for something to get you around in. The LEDs are super bright, so when you're driving at night, um, you have a nice field of view, nice field of vision. It handles pretty nicely. I will say when you're under hard acceleration, it does have some torque steer, but that's normal for any car that has power going to the front wheels. If you are part of the short community, like I am, um, the two humps on the hood are more visible, in my opinion. I notice those quite a bit. I can't see over the hood, which is, you know, fine. I'm also used to driving a tiny little sedan, so. <laughs> yes, handle quite nicely. Um, I will say the engine does sound like, I don't know, it sounds like every EcoBoost engine. So uh, one of my buddies has a EcoBoost F-150 and this sounds literally the exact same, well, I guess. Um, a little less loud, a little quieter, but when you get on the gas, it sounds the exact same. I don't know what it is. It sounds kind of uh, breathy, if you will. I don't really know how to explain that, but um, it sounds pretty weird in my personal opinion, but it's not like a sports car or anything, so that doesn't really matter. So, oh, there's a car behind me now, but it doesn't have the best turning radius. I definitely just tried to hit a U-turn and it was unsuccessful, so... <laughs> Turning radius is, it's decent, but you're not just gonna be smacking U-turns in the middle of the road. But um, yeah, other than that, it's a nice, comfortable car. It's a pretty smooth ride. Big bump, didn't feel too too crazy or anything. I'd say the main features that this car kind of appeals to is for you know the outdoors kind of people, the camping kind of people. It has a lot of features to accommodate those kind of folks. So it's got the easy clean cloth seats. I guess the material that they use makes it a lot easier to clean and you know get dirt and grime and whatnot off of. And there's that little pedal issue I was talking about. My foot just slipped off the gas a little bit, but that's nothing crazy. You can always readjust your foot. It's not like it's gonna affect anything or cause you to wreck or anything. That house looks like a little gingerbread house. <laughs> A big gingerbread house. All right, guys, so that's all for today. That has been my review of the 2021 or 2022 Ford Bronco Sport. Not really too sure what year it is, actually. But as for my normal content, as soon as I get the car back, I've got something on the way. So something that we've been waiting for for a while. So I know you guys will be excited for it. I'll give you a little hint. Carbon fiber, that's all I'm going to say. So got some more carbon fiber coming to the channel here soon once I get my car back and once she's 
all fixed up and no longer dinged up and smashed up. But <laughs> with that being said, if you can, go ahead and like that button. It definitely helps me out. Um, gets my videos out to more people so you know I can help more people out. So with that being said, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and smash that notification bell. And I will see you in the next one.